So a lot of times people doing these things and even I have had experiences with certain breathing techniques and things, you know, certain Indian breathing techniques. And it's like, when we do it, it's like a pure headache now for the next two days and all of them kind of things. So it's like, we have to know that each, you know, a lot of these cultures too, you know, it's like the, the, every, every culture and every race develops certain types of bodies and the bodies are programmed towards what is needed for that race and that culture and that place on the planet. So when you, you, you're borrowing things from other places, you have to know what you're doing. You can't just take it up and say, all right, may I go, you know, me come from North America, may I go, go Peru for go do the, the spiritual practices where have been happening for Peruvian people for thousands of years. It's like, it's, it's not a straightforward thing. I'm not saying it can't be done, but we have to know what we're doing. We can't just haphazardly go about, you know, taking just things from... I mean, this inside to nutrition too. So do you, even if you are not from that place and so on, right? Because of the mixing of races and cultures and so on. A lot right. of it comes down to nutrition as well. And are you eating from that place? And are you preparing your body? Just like when you're changing the seasons, you have to detox out the last season and prepare for the new season. Yeah? Okay. So you have to the colon because there are things that can stay in your colon for a long time. And when them things, they buck up in other, other things. And you remember your stomach is one of your brains as well. So of if course. we are not balancing our nutrition and our digestive... The gut. The gut. When some of these plant medicines hit our body, it hit our bodies differently. Yeah, when you are even the pranayama, even the breath work, because I did a session yesterday and there were people who were in the session who I literally had to pause and say, you have to be aware of what's going on in your body. Yeah, <laughs> you have to ego through this thing. And like, you're feeling busy now, all right, but you're getting a headache now, you probably need to detox. Like you are doing, you are literally fire inside your body. This is a detoxifying thing, and detox is generally a painful thing. Detox isn't a pleasant experience, Definitely. you know? Plant medicine is a kind of detox too. And I've done plant medicine where I didn't have a psychedelic experience. I vomited for hours. <laughs> yeah, it was, I was a hot mess, but that's what I needed. Exactly. Was able to when I finish that process of clearing, I make some phone calls after that. Like I call some people I don't talk to in years. I didn't even think about it until after. And I'm just like clearing the way because again, your your gut health directly tied to your mental health, and there are things that have that have us, you know, congested and constipated and blocked up that are literally causing emotional stress on our lives that we're not even thinking about. You know, so it sometimes. Was deep in the plant medicine you need for just clean out your stomach flush out your bowels do a little you know what i mean preparation yeah. and run into any kind of medical treatment when you go to the hospital and they're going to give you certain types of treatment then say don't eat at all for a certain amount of hours but yet no you know what i mean you want to come off of your kfc and your burger king and go and take ayahuasca and then you know what i mean <laughs> joke thing and I'm, i've never done ayahuasca personally yet but you know what I mean? I'm not opposed. To, I, as in, I don't fear plant medicine in the same way that I will fear the medicine that man experiments with. <laughs> <That's> you know? <laughs> so, Definitely. you, yeah. Especially in this okay. time. Especially in this time, boy. Bro, yeah. Well, so, it's just one people, of those people things. See, people see me on tour and I say, oh, come on, I can take this and take that. <laughs> when I ask, nobody knows. <laughs> You know, like certain things, the personal information. So it's like, they <laughs> don't ask. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? People need for people need for just relax, man. Because at the end of the day, I don't know. Are we are we there? I try to educate people. Like you know, what I mean, we could have we could have been out there just singing about anything. You know, what I mean, running down hits and all of them kind of thing, and running down trending, and it's like. Oh, community that i've written some songs that i would never ever publish because they're for my own like when i'm on campus and you hear your virgin and then i write some little and you're like that's so crass but i could do it better i do it better yeah. and, the man, oh, da, 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 da. and i'm like 
And I'm like, I will never utter those words out of my mouth again. Because you can do anything. Oh, but so we're I songwriters. We're songwriters. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, you give away a concept, we can put lyrics to it. We can flesh it out. But the thing is, this, this particular journey for me, and as in my experience of you, it is, it is mostly to serve. You know? Exactly. So it's not everything I can do, I'm going to do. And it's not everything exactly. that I'm going to do out loud for it's other people. Purpose, it's purpose-driven. Purpose-driven. You know? Word sound is so much power. Like, we have to be careful. Like, I, am, I don't sing certain songs, right? I don't sing certain... I don't utter negative words over myself. See. So even... Not that I am never in a depressive state and oh, we should only sing certain kind of music because our life is perfect. <laughs> Obviously not, right? But yeah. I am not going to a certain words over myself. But I hear other people write those songs and I love them. And these love songs and oh man, this and whatever and romance and all these things. Yeah. I sing along. I'm not out there promoting them, but I in my house singing them and some of the most ratchet, terrible songs as well. You can find creative value in them. You find a place and time. Them are going to reach you. Another, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I want to create that. And it doesn't mean there's a there are times when that music is repulsive to me. Yeah, it's really about... It's at all. To me, it's really about what, what makes the spirit feel fulfilled. Because at the end of the day, you know, we, we full joy certain things. We go watch certain type of movies, gun movie and, and suspense and crime and all of them things. But... Would my spirit feel fulfilled if I was to put them things out in the world? It's like, and then even from an next perspective, because maybe you do it and you get the success, you feel fulfillment from a level of success, which is cool, all right, whatever. But what about the balance? Like, everybody has a role to play in life, I feel. And I feel like my musical role, which I feel is similar to your musical role, is providing the balance within the content of what music is out there, what people have to listen. You know, if if there if there wasn't a sizzler doing the type of songs that he did, maybe I wouldn't even be doing music, or maybe I'd be doing some different type of music. True. You know what I mean? It's it's just it's just the role. Everybody have a role. That's why when we sing revival, we all have a part to play. It's like, you know, everybody have a different function in this thing. Some people are go are go do this, and them are go go this with it, and them are go sign to this label, and some of them are go get. You know what I mean? That that's cool. Everybody have a role. Everybody have a role. And also, like, when we look at how we judge, like, good or bad, this polarity consciousness, right? Yeah. Where, oh, a good experience, and this is a bad experience, or this is a good song, and this is a, you know, it's a bad word. Positive, and so, negative, and... Is set up yourself to limit the potential of experiences that you can have in life, you yeah. know? You, you, you set up yourself to be divided from somebody else once you start to, you know, break up into that dichotomy it's either it's good or it's bad or the judgment and you miss out on experiences like for me every experience that i have is an experience that i have attracted if i take exactly. that level of responsibility for my life then i can never be a victim i yeah. will always be to understand why this is happening because what you might look at as a negative experience right now Three years from now, you look back and say, wow, if it wasn't for that experience. So if in my moment now, because of my many years on earth, I've had enough of those experiences to know that, okay, this negative experience that is happening to me is an opportunity for me to be still and observe. Exactly. Because real emotional explosion is going to probably cause me to miss the lesson that it's here for. And make me have to go have the, the experience over again in the future. So it's like, how do I... Place. And again, it brings us back to that conversation about Ganja. Because Ganja yeah. is one of those that gets you to be so deeply reflective. Introspective. Yeah? Introspective. If you are able to just use it in a balanced way. And like observe yourself as you use these herbs. And this is why I steam. Because steaming is something that you have to pay attention to. Like yeah. you pay attention. How, it, how your body is receiving it. And it's one of the, it, can't, it doesn't creep up on you, right? It's, you are feeling as it goes along. So you are determining how much of it. By some people, then hit the steamers, then take two hits, and they're like, that's it. No more. Yeah. Because they, they're good. 
You know what I mean? Like, like you. <laughs> and I have other people. And it depends too where you are. Because if you see me in public, you know that if you go beyond a certain level, you're going to leave the people and you're going to be in another place all by yourself. You know what I mean? Sure. But if you get just the right amount, it makes it just sociable enough so that you can interact with people and they can get a good experience of you. So some people yeah. use it for them society, right? And then with steaming, because you're not burning the herb, you don't stink of smoke, yeah? yeah. You're not having, it doesn't affect your, your whole countenance in the same way. So you can steam and people don't even know that you were steaming. Yeah? yeah sure. And just uh, it's it's such a light experience for such an intense experience. Definitely. Yeah. And it's light, of, body, light on the body. Yeah, lighter on the body, but it goes directly to the brain. So yeah. while the smoke having a full body experience of smoke, and that it, some people become addicted to that. So it's not even so much the ganja of it. Some people ratio is not 30, 70, it's more. 50 50 or 60 40, right? They grab a tobacco, tobacco, tobacco is definitely addictive. I, there's no doubt about that. Like the sensation of it, <laughs> addicted, but addicted to I really tobacco, them addicted to you know, yeah. And it's the feeling, the, the feeling when it when it jumped down your throat, you know, that, <laughs> that little yeah. feeling there. But, you know, some man just hold you with the pepper. That's how I like and grab out the pepper. It's like, man, I love hot things just to burn them tongue. Like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I want more. I'm like, I don't want. Same like a kind of, you know, it's a kind of, what's the word? Masochism. Because <laughs> yeah. if we, it is. But uh, it's all around. It is like, it's an interesting pairing of, of things. But it is a dangerous thing. Especially when you're introducing grabber, because not everyone is growing their own tobacco leaves and curing it in the right way. So you yeah. don't know. Don't some people? Don't some people would have used the tobacco in certain spiritual rituals too? Definitely, but certainly not comparable to all the man use ganja. To, definitely. To all the man definitely tobacco. not. Because definitely. and I mean tobacco, it is. Is particular rituals at particular times these cultures used to use it for, you know. This is not every day you wake up first thing in the morning till evening and you take a break to do a little work and go back at it, right? Definitely. This is special rituals with particular intentions that you use the, the herb and tobacco in particular for. And it's, her, and it's tobacco that is grown for that purpose. Yeah. So when hear people use those excuses now, I don't argue with people anymore in life. But I just make a mental note that that's an excuse that you're making because you're addicted. You know? Okay. Somebody being addicted doesn't make them a bad person. It's not a negative thing. I don't say that with judgment. I say that with great compassion because I understand that addiction is a terrible and powerful thing. It's like a demon around you. You, don't, you literally lose your ability to manage yourself. Right? You reach speaking a of, point. Speaking of uh, demons, right? Speaking of demons, right? Say that again. Sorry, then. you just make a great point because what a lot of us are not aware of is that there are different entities around us on different planes of existence constantly. Just like when you see like the, the flies, them will pitch upon a, upon a cow or whatever, and them, them whole existence is to eat the little feces around the cow and all of them kind of thing there, isn't it? Like, them need the cow to exist and them feed off of the cow. So it's just like bees with flowers and them thing there. There are certain entities within like the astral world and with the etheric world and all of these things that we can't see unless we have certain abilities developed that they feed off of the energy when we do certain things. You know, so our emotions during that process, them literally feed, it's food for them. Like they come around and they will do things to encourage you to maintain it so that they can eat and feed off for you. These just are like actual entities. Fuck. What's you that? Know what I mean? So that just, just like what? Because it's the same with the parasites inside of your stomach. You think you crave sugar, you think you're craving this fast food, but really exactly. it's part of pulling your brain. Exactly. Yeah? 100%. But really these things are detrimental to you. But people now have no ritual of cleansing. 
no ritual of detox. We have lost those traditions because we're not paying attention to our inward cycles. We're only paying attention to the cycle of, of money and the cycle of, yeah. you know, and which season of Game of Thrones is coming, you know, the new Game of Thrones is coming. Everybody know when that's going to hit Everything, you know? Everything right now is to keep you mentally stimulated. That's all it is. You know, the whole pandemic was to, 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 to keep us even more focused on, on technology and more into with phones and more into streaming and more into all of these things. Like physical, ac yeah, physical activity and all of these things is becoming like less and less significant for us, for humanity. And these, and these are ways where people can capitalize off us. So, you know, there's a whole side of that that's being pushed by big tech and big pharma and all of these things. So as you said, the more we, we keep grounded by keeping these rituals and certain things, the better off we are and the more balanced we are. And the more we go out into nature and not just dip on the phones all day, it's like it's going to get more and more difficult because they're going to keep doing things to keep us indoors and keep us getting Uber Eats and all of these kind of things. And, you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's temporary because it's not sustainable. And that is why I'm going to segue now. That is why now in this Web3 reality that is coming forward, right? Mm -hmm. Because there is no point in fighting what is happening. It is Definitely. all about ourselves. Yes. Understanding what we can do with the tools that are being made available as we continue to balance our physical and our spiritual. Yeah? Sure. So for me... In looking, because I'm always looking at how do I now serve the new experience of life that my brothers and sisters are having. Otherwise, it's up in the bush. Like, I don't have to deal with people. I can just go and deal with life. I don't have to interact with the world, right? But if we go and interact with the world, you know, to how we grow, to how our parents grow, we know that we must serve because it is in serving yeah. that we are, right? I'm not a saint. I know that it is very gratifying to serve. So we're going to serve. And we look and we say, what's happening now we see where cryptocurrencies and nfts this is not a new thing but right now we see where that has a great potential so we spend months studying and observing it to see okay it when does it become stable what is, what are the real use cases that we can apply to the real world who are yeah. the people in this case? what are their weaknesses how can we fortify them how can we find a balance with you know, technology and which is the inevitability and still maintaining our humanity. So yeah. I look at the space and I don't see any wellness offerings that are geared specifically toward people who are thriving in this space. And when I observe the people I know who are thriving in this space, these people are not taking care of themselves. Mm. These people are getting their physical bodies. These are the people. <laughs> get drawn into that space now and mean sitting down getting fat not realizing that five hours have passed and they haven't even had any water or had any food you know but they made lots of money you know so it's like reminding them of that balance how do i now create a community that can reach them because they're not even in the same web they're not on instagram anymore they're in web three they're in a different part of the internet they're in a different experience of technology where the whole world is going to go eventually, right? So how do I help my brothers and sisters now mitigate against being pulled all the way in and forgetting themselves? Like and in this the is why I don't like, you know? Uh, and, and I mean, if you look at even the term non-fungible, that means we are going to determine the value of what this is. So this is a test as well as it is an opportunity to serve. So I want to test and see how can increase the importance of utility services yeah Pierre will come back it must get to an important call but we have to we have to see how are we going to increase the the value of our interactions and of our life experiences without losing ourselves in these spaces because his majesty says and i always repeat this is that the spiritual and the material have to grow together you know what I mean? They have to grow together at the same time. So if it is that we are going to operate in this technological world, we need, if we don't have a person in our lives who is reminding us, 
go and do this. Go and eat some water. Get up now when last you stretch. We need at least a community of people so that we know that somebody's checking in. Somebody's checking in on just that in this space. So that's kind of the stance that we've taken now with, um, with the chalice station. And we're using chalice and ganja because we're bridging it too. We're bridging it because there's many birds we're trying to feed with the one stone, with the one seed. You know what I mean? So how do, how do we help our community understand that what is the word? That balance is crucial. Balance it's is important crucial. thing. It's an important thing because right now the way I'm see this thing I head towards is like matrix where everybody just plugged into these machines and we just live an alternate reality where as I say, I can't I can't really see humanity reach into that level. I feel like something something oh, about already you know, bro. I don't remember which was it China? Where they literally showed uh, one of those farms where they're making babies so that you don't have to have the youth in your belly anymore. Yeah. You can't yeah. have the youth growing in the pod. And they're literally showing you, walking you through these factories, these baby factories. And I saw it and I'm telling you that it shook me up, especially with a baby in my belly now and all of the things that I have to go through to think that. You know, oh, you know, it can even be more effective than the mother's womb. I mean, I hear mankind has said them thing there. You know what I mean? I mean, I yeah, it's like you wonder, you wonder what, what, you know, you wonder if actual souls will be in, in these entities. It's like, you know, I can't see, I can't see that being a process for souls to be able to enter the earth. You know, it's just, it's scary to me. And we, we know that there are certain entities that, literally want humans to stay within this earth plane cycle they don't want humans to go through the process of going into the higher realms and then returning back to a reincarnation process they want to keep feeding on us within the low energy cycles and frequencies yeah and now them have things i'm saying you know man cannot live to 150 why would i want to live to 150 you know what i mean that's me personally and i might sound weird to somebody else because in their mind why do you want to die? 100%. That could never be a negative thing if it is a natural thing that happened to everybody. That could never be a finality. It must be a part of the cycle. Why is it the same polarity consciousness of good and bad? Like birth is good, but death is bad? You know? No, but de death is just another birth. Death is just another birth. The thing is, we don't have enough knowledge about the afterlife process. And that's one of the things where I kind of taken up on myself to lead the charge on because, you know, we don't know about life in these other worlds, you know, and there's ones out there who have extensive experience of seeing into these worlds and, and thing and, and, and recording information, you know, the Akashic records are there that speak to how humans evolved and how we were before we are now where you need man and woman to reproduce. There were periods where, you know, it was different. And there will be periods in the future where it's different from that too, you know. But at the end of the day, we're souls and we're eternal. You know, we live eons, eons and eons. And we've seen many different manifestations of, of this planet and this solar system, you know. And even that reincarnates. So <laughs> it's like them can't stop life no matter what them doing. And we know that there's a, there's a war right now between nature and science, you know? And, and that is something I'm very conscious of. And I'm not about all of these, these, these people and these movements and these political sides that are just pushing science, 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 technology, because at the end of the day, that's what they're trying to lead this thing to, to where, you know, you're, you're creating babies in machines. And we's not about that. We are beings of the earth. We come from the planet. You know, our, 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 our evolution is suitable to the life on this planet. And if we are this, created... On this planet, yeah. No, of course. The, at the, there was a point where the sun... There was a point where everything was one mass, you know. And then the different planets started to shoot off. And the different beings that needed experience on the different planets went with them. And our, our existence is here on Earth. So at the end of the day, you know, people talk about aliens and all of these things and 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 you know there's whole heap of there's whole heap of madness out there but at the end of the day we are here for this earth we are a part of the earth's evolution we are not here to try and separate ourselves from the planet 
and try and create an alternate reality and all that kind of thing. The earth, everything that has life and breath and grows and develops is part of the one original source we come from. Yeah? Sure. And create this idea that, you know, there are too many people on the planet and, you know, this, this scarcity is the reality and all of these, these you know, these yep. fear ideologies that are being pushed on us by the 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 colonial news media yeah right it go against nature like you know we're harming the environment you and i mean these are sometimes very touchy topics for people because people have invested a lot of emotion into it and there's a lot of money spent marketing certain concepts to people right and so everything going green and whatever and which car you drive because it's low emission but the factories that build these things or the places that grow these things and the way that like you can twist any argument with words especially the english language which is That's... a big language you know what i mean and it's especially... no, not only that them using them using the word love and, and saying this love movement and is, is them justifying total confusion and total, you know, stepping away from the process of nature. You know, where we, we, as, we as human beings now, with our limited um, spiritual growth and thing, are going to determine, you know, all right, they're, they're, that's what I can't understand with people, you know. Like, there are higher, higher beings that literally serve for the greater good of the creator. Zine, and they're responsible for, for, for our evolution, right? In the Bible, they call them angels, all of these kind of things. You hear people talk about guardian angels and stuff. Them literally working ceaselessly around the clock to ensure that we have the appropriate experience for our karma based on what we need to learn and what we need to grow. There are beings out there that's literally, that's all their purpose is, to make sure that we get sent to the right family that we get sent to the right country, the right city, so that we can grow around the right people and have the right friends, and we can have and the right, the right our choices that we've made before we end, we of enter course. this. They, they work with us to create these these scenarios, you know, and you work with groups of souls to create scenarios. So when you forward into, you get presented with a body now, and you inner yourself due to negative experiences where you have and traumas where you go through determine say yo this body is not suitable for me and all of them kind that is totally going against the, the process of nature that has been in development for millions and billions of years and we know we are, we are going to determine we are like children you know in this evolutionary cycle we are literally like babies you know you know, you mentioned that when we were children, we were closer to, to, to the most high and we were close, closer to nature. That's 100% true. But we weren't self-conscious. And that is the same thing. That's the reality that we're coming from, from previous cycles in evolution. We were much more spiritual beings. We could see the other spiritual beings around us. We had our third eye was actually something that used to stick out and we used to be able to perceive the world through our physical third eye right and then it, it developed it, it actually atrophied over time to the point where our brains develop now and that's the thing is like we weren't necessarily self-conscious at the time we were literally instruments of the higher when them talk about jehovah and them talk about all of these deities these deities literally used to direct our every movement you know we are reaching to the point now we're, we're, I said we're like babies, but we're actually like, like teenagers. We're, we're starting to think for ourselves now. We're starting to say, hey, you know, so and so, and, and trying to make our own choices and all of them things. But we do have guidance. We, we, I mean, we don't have that self, that wisdom to know what is really good for us. When you're a teenager, you think you know everything. Well, elders, we don't have elders. That's it. We don't That's have it. elders. We're we're yeah. disconnected from them. We're disconnected from the heart. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Like when you're a child, you have the mother, you have the father, you have the older siblings to guide you. That is exactly how we were in and, and Atlantis and all of these kind of places where we had spiritual beings closely. When Moses went to the bush and the bush spoke to him, it's like we, we, we needed that direct contact with these beings to guide us. We needed 
people to, to be able to go into the pyramids them and get knowledge directly from these higher beings so that they could... And, and those, they, are, those are specific. So exactly. not everybody 